Good day, church family. I trust that you are all still keeping well. Today I want to share with you a psalm that I think will help all of us. And I'm not sure about you, but um, I have sometimes found myself in a place where I'm very discouraged. You know, I'm just mentally tired and restless. But I'm so grateful for the Word of God because it always gets to build and encourage us. Today we'll be reading from Psalms 116. And the book of Psalms is a, is a compilation of inspired Hebrew prayers and hymns. And this particular psalm is, is a psalm of praise. If you go through Psalm 113 to 118, you realize that um, all these psalms, they end with praise God. And with this particular psalm that we're going to be looking into this evening, um, this was a psalm that was sung and chanted in the temple during the season of Passover while the lamb was being slain. And this is quite a, a personal psalm, not necessarily personal to me, but to the psalmist, because in the psalm itself, you will notice that he actually says I and my quite a lot of times. And he takes us through a couple of verses that, that sounds like a journey he embarked on with God. And this is, this is how it reads, um, Psalms 116, verse 1 to 2. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. And it's almost like a storyteller, you know. The psalmist declares his love for God. And he goes on further to explain why he actually says that he loves God. He explains that in verse 2. And... You know, like a father talking to his child, he, he often bends down to hear what the child has to say because, you know, in this, in this case, the father is obviously tall and the child is short. And he says in verse 2 that because he turned his ear towards me, other versions say because he has bent his ear towards me. And this is the picture that he's giving us that... That's the same with God, you know, he bends his ear in order to hear us. And he's speaking from, from a place of having discovered the joy of knowing who God is. And he says, I will call on him as long as I live. You know, the, the psalmist is declaring that as long as he is still breathing, he will continue to call upon the Lord. And, and I think the psalmist had become mightily, mightily convinced of the power of prayer and of God's willingness, of God's willingness and response to prayer. And, and I feel like once you have been in an almost similar path, you will understand or be able to relate with what the psalmist was saying. And it continues in verse 3 to 6. It says, The cords of death entangled me, the anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion or oh, mercy. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. And church family, today I want to remind you that God actually answers prayer. And I want you to take that in and believe it, not for the person sitting next to you or not for your friend or whoever, but believe it for yourself, for in your life that God actually does answer prayers and that he delights in hearing from us as his children. He delights in answering our prayers. One of the great and wonderful truths about God is that he delights to show us mercy. Isn't that great? That though we all have sinned and fallen short of his glory, the Bible says that 
that God is gracious and full of compassion and that his mercies are new to us each and every morning. So God delights to show mercy. And the, psalm, and the psalmist um, speaks of that encounter. It's not something that he just read or heard from someone else, but he's speaking about a personal experience that he had with God, where, where in this psalm we, we hear that he's clearly vocalizing that. And after all of that, after taking us through, you know, how much he loves God, and what and why he actually loves him and how he is righteous you know and merciful it's almost like he takes a long deep breath and this is what he says in verses seven and eight he says return to your rest my soul for the lord has been good to you for you lord have delivered me from death my eyes from tears my feet from stum- from stumbling so the psalmist here, he's literally instructing or commanding his soul to go back to its former state of peace and rest. And he explains that in, in verse 8, you know, for you, Lord, have delivered me from death. Because how many of us know that our soul can get to the state where it gets agitated, where it gets tired, you know, frustrated, anguished, and restless? And it's almost like you get to the point where you forget what God has done for you and some of the things that he has taken you through. But we constantly have to command our souls to go back to its former place of peace and rest like the psalmist did. Because we can't afford to believe in our current state of feeling, which can be influenced by what is currently happening in our lives. Instead, Let us continue to believe and trust in the power of prayer. So when your soul gets to that state, when it gets to that restless state, remind yourself of some of the things that God has taken you through. Remind yourself of that and let let that strengthen you. Um, It continues to say in verse 12 that, What shall I return or what shall I render to the Lord for all? for all his goodness towards me you know so the psalmist asks a question that he actually ends up answering himself in the following verse in verse 13 he he says i will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the lord i think every believer you know finds themselves asking that question that what shall I render to Jehovah, you know? That what shall I return to the Lord for all the goodness that he has shown towards me? And the honest truth is that we cannot profit God in any way. There is absolutely nothing that we can do to match up to what he has done for us. Even our very best is just not enough. And the, the good part is that he is not looking for us to actually try to work for what he did or continues to do for us. But what, but what we can do is to devote ourselves and all that we are to his service. In, in, another verse, in another version, in verse 13, it says, I will take up the cup of salvation instead of I will lift up the cup of salvation. And I believe that it basically means that um, I will receive the offer of forgiveness of sins and accept the relationship with Jesus Christ, you know. And this particular version that we are reading says, I will lift up the cup of salvation. So this one, it almost sounds like it's talking to someone who has already received salvation. And it's saying, you know, once you receive, you know, this salvation, I will I will lift it up for everyone to see, you know. And when God has been so good to you, you don't keep silent. You don't keep silent because it almost becomes, you know, something that is burning inside of you that you just want to share with the whole world. And our salvation is good enough for us to be able to share God's goodness. And once we experience that goodness, you know, we are able to be in that state of just wanting to share. And in Romans 9 verse 2, in Romans verse 4 it reads or do you despise the riches of his goodness 
forbearance, long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. And that's the thing about God's goodness, you know. It leads you to a place where you just realize that you are nothing without him, to a place where you, you, you totally surrender, to a place where you repent because you realize just how much you need him each and every day. So, so church, I hope that um, as we pray this evening that um, we get in that place where we are reminded that um, even though you know, we, we may be feeling a bit restless, that um, we must command our souls to actually go back to its former state of peace and that God answers prayers and that he's waiting to hear from us this evening. <laughs>